Ghosts, without doubt, one of the greatest mysteries of our world. Do they exist or not? Chilling stories of encountering specters are as ancient as the tongue of mankind, and saying eyewitness accounts are unnerving is a grave understatement. Antebellum mansions all across the southern United States carry notorious histories of sweat, blood, and maybe a few spirits. However, one particular plantation home seemed to attract the supernatural even at its construction. Rocky Hill Castle in the 1840s, a charming abode in the Alabama countryside that belonged to James E. Saunders and his wife, Mary Frances Watkins. After the French architect completed the brilliant home, James, though a wealthy man, could not pay the expenses. Infuriated, James yelled viciously at the architect, refusing to pay him. The Frenchman left in a fury, cursing the mansion and its deceitful occupants. The architect passed away shortly after. Meanwhile, James and his family were dining merrily when a loud beating noise resounded from the cellar, rattling the entire frame of the house, as if somebody was destroying the foundation. When they investigated, they discovered nothing but empty darkness. This occurred numerous times, especially when the family gathered around their piano. Later, James added a tower to Rocky Hill Castle, which he used to hide Confederate soldiers. Two unnamed soldiers died from their injuries and were buried in the family cemetery. It is believed that one of the dead soldiers attracted the phantom of his deceased maiden, who appeared routinely walking listlessly in the tower before fading. One day, as Mary approached the stairwell, an ethereal woman descended the stairs in front of her. James often teased his wife about the ghost that she claimed to see, but stopped when he had an experience of his own. One day, James went to retrieve a bottle of wine from the cellar, but froze in terror upon seeing the same ghostly woman sitting on a box, smiling eerily at him. He backed away and slammed the cellar door shut, forgetting about his wine. After many other spectral incidents, James's family left the house. Throughout the late 19th and early 20th centuries, families frequently moved in and out due to the paranormal activity. Eventually, the spirits of Rocky Hill Castle finally claimed the mansion as their own until 1961, when it was demolished. However, it is said that a darkness still lingers over the grounds. From wraiths in formidable castles to shadows darting through subterranean tunnels adorned with bones, it seems as if spirits cannot help but occupy Europe's enchanting lands. But there are some cases that stand out from the rest. In the small district of Battersea, London, rests an ordinary house on Eland Road that holds a forbidding past. Its former occupants, the Robinson family, began to experience unsettling events in 1927. 86-year-old Henry Robinson was a resident for 25 years and lived with his son, Frederick, and three daughters, Lila, Kate, and Mrs. George Perkins, who was widowed and had a 14-year-old son. On the evening of November 29th, the family was terrorized by a loud rapping all throughout the house and a ceaseless knocking from the outside, which shattered the window panes. When Frederick found the courage to investigate, he found chunks of coal and coins had fallen upon the conservatory, breaking the glass. When it happened again weeks later, the family asked the police to monitor the house, suspecting vandals were to blame. Still, the coins and small objects once more fell upon the house. Police couldn't explain the phenomenon. Then, on December 19th, the washerwoman told Frederick she no longer wanted to work in the house after she uncovered a pile of burning embers in the outhouse, despite there having been no fire. 
Another night, one of the sisters witnessed the hall stand shaking on its own, tipping over. Frederick caught it, but an invisible force aggressively pulled it out of his hands and threw it down the stairway, breaking it in two. One morning, the knocking persisted until a window broke and a thick-set chest of drawers collapsed to the floor. Eventually, the local press wrote about the incidents and caught the attention of British psychic researcher and author Harry Price. Harry paid a visit in January and noticed severe damage to the house, noting the accounts of Kate, Mrs. George Perkins, and Frederick. The following evening, Frederick was apprehended by the authorities to be psychologically evaluated, but was later released. Police did not believe he orchestrated the events, especially since his absence did not stop the pandemonium. But with time, the occurrences diminished, Eland Road became quiet, and the Robinson family was finally, for reasons unknown, left in peace. The lush landscape of rural England is scattered with innumerable legends, and among those legends is one that has bestowed a curious image upon mankind. Raynham Hall was a lofty country house built in 1619 by Sir Roger Townshend. Nearly a century later in 1713, Charles Townshend, the estate's second Viscount, married Dorothy Walpole, the rumored mistress of another prominent count, Lord Wharton. When Dorothy's husband discovered the affair, he locked her away within Raynham Hall to pace the halls alone, separated from her children. Sir Roger told everyone that she had passed away, conducting a fake funeral to corroborate his claims. Officially, Dorothy perished of smallpox in 1726, but others claim she broke her neck after being pushed down the main staircase. Since her death, the number of ghost sightings at Raynham increased, with the first occurring in 1835. During a Christmas party, a guest claimed to have seen a woman in brown wandering the halls. When he neared her, she turned to face him, revealing hollow eye sockets. One year later, a man named Captain Frederick Marriott requested to spend the night at Raynham Hall to disprove any ghostly claims. During his stay, a spectral woman carrying a lamp grinned menacingly at Frederick in the weak, flickering glow. Terrified, Frederick took a shot with his revolver and the spirit dissolved into darkness. Throughout the years, the occupants of Raynham Hall encountered the Lady in Brown. Then, in September of 1936, a photographer and his assistant from Country Life magazine visited the house to take pictures. After taking the first shot of the grand staircase, the photographer and his assistant noticed an odd, wraith-like figure descending the steps. Their photograph of the misty entity has become one of the most widely recognized images of the supernatural. To this day, the Townshend family are still rightful owners of Raynham Hall, and we can only assume they still see the infamous Lady in Brown. Attics are places that many individuals dread, the stuffy air and the enveloping darkness, where one never knows if there is something ill-intentioned lying in wait. In November of 1988, Jackie Hernandez and her two-year-old son moved into their new home in San Pedro, California, in hopes of turning over a new leaf. Jackie's catastrophic marriage ended, leaving her pregnant, but the nightmare was just beginning. The family cat exhibited abnormal behavior, chasing unseen things throughout the house, but Jackie ignored this. However, she couldn't ignore when pencils were flung at her from their pencil holder. After this, Jackie realized something wasn't right. The beds collapsed for no apparent reason, and a sticky substance leached through the kitchen walls while muffled voices could be heard emanating from the attic. After Jackie's daughter Samantha was born in April of 1989, the true horror commenced. Frightening dreams disturbed Jackie's sleep, one in particular of a man being beaten to death near the San Pedro Harbor. One night, Jackie got up to use the restroom and discovered an old man with gray skin sitting on the side of her son's bunk bed. Before she could react, he vanished into thin air. 
Jackie later saw the same old man peering down at her through the trap door of the attic. The unearthly occurrences fascinated paranormal researcher and parapsychologist Dr. Barry Taff. Barry and his team came to Jackie's house to conduct an investigation, armed with video cameras and infrared detectors. After hearing shuffling in the attic, they climbed through the trap door to investigate, and the photographer had his camera wrenched from his hand. He gazed across the room with a flashlight to see his camera lying perfectly in a small crate. Later that night, the investigators took samples of a bizarre liquid oozing from a light switch and shipped it off to a lab to be tested. The results said the substance was blood plasma from a male. Dr. Taff and his crew later returned for another investigation, taking to the attic again. As they cautiously walked through the darkness, a clothesline abruptly caught hold of the photographer's neck and began to strangle him. His partner didn't realize what was happening until he snapped a photo of Jeff desperately struggling to free himself. After freeing the photographer, Dr. Taft's team left immediately. Jackie decided to move back into her husband's trailer 300 miles away. The sinister activity followed, however. One day, Jackie and a few neighbors were putting a TV into a shed when the old man materialized on the screen. That night, Jackie heard a wrathful pounding originating from the shed. Once more, Dr. Taff came, only this time, they brought a Ouija board. It revealed to them that the specter was a young man who was murdered in the San Pedro Harbor in 1930. His killer was the original owner of the San Pedro house. Jackie researched and dug through archives, matching the spirit to a sailor named Herman Hendrickson, whose body was found in the surrounding bay waters. She also identified the old man as John Damon, the builder and first resident of the San Pedro house. Since the fearful events, the ghosts have left Jackie and her family alone. However, to this day, neighbors still hear shuffling in the attic of the San Pedro house at night. Hauntings are usually relatively tame. Perhaps a common household item goes missing or a door opens by itself, but there are some instances where a spirit can threaten lives. In 1973, Jack and Janet Smurl fled Hurricane Agnes with their two children and moved into a duplex in West Pittston, Pennsylvania. Jack's parents, John and Mary Smurl, purchased the home for only $18,000, but it was in dire need of renovation. While Jack and his family occupied one side of the house, his parents resided in the other. The family spent many hours fixing up their quiet home, and for the first 18 months, their lives were fairly normal. That all changed in January of 1974, when several inexplicable events occurred. A television set suddenly caught on fire, a mysterious stain emerged on the new carpet, and water pipes constantly leaked, even after being repaired. The remodeled bathroom had also been severely scratched, as if a wild animal had clawed the floor, sink, and bathtub. The incidents worsened for the Smurl family in 1975. Putrid smells drifted through the air. Dawn, the eldest daughter, frequently complained about people floating in her bedroom. Doors opened and shut for no reason. Random footsteps resonated throughout the house. Toilets flushed by themselves and empty chairs rocked on their own. By 1977, the family accepted that their house was indeed haunted. But with two young children, Shannon and Karen, the concern only grew. By 1985, the hauntings turned dangerous. Jack's parents heard abusive and vulgar arguing from the other side of the house, but Jack and Janet hadn't been fighting. In February of that same year, Janet began hearing her name called by a malicious voice while doing laundry in the basement. The house often became bitterly cold despite having a proper heating unit. Black, shadowy figures also moved through the home, staring at members of the family before disappearing. A ceiling fan fell inches from Shannon, almost killing her. Jan and Jack were dragged out of their beds in the middle of the night. Their German Shepherd Simon was thrown several times, 
Scratching noises persisted through the walls, and Shannon was hurled out of her bed and down the stairs by an unseen force. In January of 1986, the family contacted demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren to investigate. The Warrens also brought Rosemary Froy, a nurse and psychic. As they walked through the house, the Warrens questioned Jack and Janet about their religious beliefs, the current state of their family, and if they had ever been involved in the occult. After meticulously inspecting the home, Rosemary told the Smurls that their house was inhabited by four spirits. The first was a friendly elderly woman, the second was a restless girl, the third was an anguished man that had died in the house, and the fourth was a vicious demon. The Warrens and Rosemary urged Jack and Janet to display religious symbols throughout the house and have praying sessions regularly. Unfortunately, this did not stop the demon from assaulting Jack and Janet. Catholic priests visited the Smurls' home on several occasions to try and witness the demonic activity for themselves, but never once had a negative experience. In 1987, the family left their home, but the demon followed them to their new residence. An exorcism was performed in the Smurls' new home in 1989, and the demon finally ceased its destruction. The story has been dissected by journalists, television producers, priests, and skeptics of the paranormal. Today, Jack, Janet, and their family continue to live undisturbed. That's all for now. True crime and creepy content is being demonetized on YouTube, making it harder for me to create this content for you. If you would like to help fight this change and keep YouTube creepy, please consider pledging even $1 to my Patreon linked in the description below. If even 5% of my audience did that, we could guarantee that we could keep YouTube creepy. Thanks for your consideration. And thank you for watching. Be sure to check out another one of my videos and of course press on screen now to subscribe to my channel because you won't want to miss what's next. And I'll see you next time.